If I can have your attention, welcome. Welcome to the uh, workshop one for the Difference Maker 2023 Idea Challenge. Uh, I'm David Vadalaro. I'll be, I'll be starting out the presentation tonight. Then we have our guest speakers, Kevin Willett and Tom Wilkes. Uh, yep, there they are. I, got them on. I, I couldn't remember if I had a separate slide or not, but they're on the first slide. So they'll be actually doing the presentations tonight. I'm going to just start out just giving you a big highlight of the program. We support all majors and disciplines. We're an entrepreneurship uh, program on the university about creativity and problem solving, where you can, for all majors and disciplines, all years from first year to PhD, and all student ideas, which we have many tonight. So I'm really looking forward to seeing some, hearing some of the presentations that I've seen your, your initial uh, write-ups come in. And we work with students, who, if you don't have ideas, so if you're a student here tonight that's not on a team, you can actually participate on a team by uh, using the Team Maker platform or potentially find uh, uh, someone to work with tonight. So this is some of our impact here. We have, we've reached over 65,000 students. We've awarded $586,000. And the mo other interesting number is the 14 team patents filed, but Six million has actually been generated by those teams, and that's actually one of the more, uh, I think, interesting num numbers, but four, four, and seven million raised, so for fundraising and things like that. So, uh. so we have our faculty fellows, of which we have tonight. We have uh, Kevin and Tom. We also have a guest, uh, Maria, over there. And let's see, and we have Ray. Is there anybody else I'm missing that do I not see? If I'm missing somebody else, let me know. Otherwise. Oh, I have a, a quick digressive announcement. Which okay. Is Nice, nice. So these are all our faculty fellows. We have Carter uh, Ko from Engineering, Yuho Kim from Co Health Sciences, Kathy Levy from Fine Arts, and I already mentioned Ray Mansfield from the Honors College. Neil Shortland is also from Fine Arts, and Tom Wilkes is from the Kennedy College of Sciences. Kevin Willett is from the Manning School of Business, and Kalila Walkowitz is from the College of Engineering. So. So we have our $50,000 idea challenge. We have about 40 applicants this year, all six colleges, all new products and services. And uh, so we're gonna talk about sort of the next steps. We have our preliminary pitch off on April 4th. That's what you're working towards right now. And then the idea challenge on April 13th, which will be final 10 teams will be eligible for that. And then we'll also, if you, if you don't make it into the final 10, you can be eligible for fan favorite. So that's another uh, award, but you build your team Right now, you're working on that. You can use the Team Maker platform, meet people here, attend the workshop series, you're already doing that. But now you're gonna start researching your problem, opportunity, solution, and resources. And this is step one for that tonight. And we'll, um, we're gonna give you a toolkit. We'll also email you a digital copy of the toolkit, but right now we're gonna be giving you a paper copy to start working on of just the, of the problem and market opportunity sheets. But you're gonna, then you'll be developing your idea plan for March 3rd. And then your rocket pitch will be for March 27th if you make it into preliminaries from the idea plan. So the agenda for tonight is I'm basically going over the Difference Maker program. You're gonna start, we're gonna start talking about sharing ideas and building what makes a good problem. We're gonna talk about that. That's what our guest speakers will be. And then we're gonna do an activity around brainstorming and problem uh, pitching. Problems, you're gonna pitch them. We'll do some team presentations and then we'll talk about next steps. Any questions so far? All right, so an idea plan is basically a two to three page project summary of your project, opportunity, solution, and resources. And basically the problem is what you're addressing, why it's important, who cares, the opportunity associated with that, who's your competition, and how big is your, how big is your uh, audience for that, your market. And the solution is how you're gonna address that problem, the resources are the things you're gonna need in order to implement the solution. So I, with, uh, with that, Kevin, I think I'm gonna have you come up here. And remember, this is based on research, not your opinion. And that's what we're gonna teach you in these workshops. Is Tom first? <laughs> and remember, your idea plan will be due March 3rd. And we have 
microphone. So when it comes to audience participation, and yeah, we have that. So you're good. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Professor Kev. Welcome, everyone. So we start at the top, problem. Clearly state what your problem is. How significant is it? Who's affected? You gotta do some research, find out who's affected and why is it important to solve this problem. That's where we're going tonight. So what makes a good problem statement? For me, it's something that matters to you. Let me tell you, give you an example. Last term, we had Team Hoppers apply for Difference Maker. What their, their project is, is they realize students who have been at home haven't had social skills. Being at home, you're not interacting with other kids. They made a board game similar to checkers that allows students to interact with each other. This is, appeals to me because they describe my nephew. My nephew is eight years old. He didn't have great social skills after being home for two years. He has no social skills. He if he has to interact with other kids, he struggles. So that's why it made personal to me. And the more personal it is to you, the better your why is gonna be. Why do we need to solve this? Because you're gonna say, this is impacting my life. And when you hit that wall and you're not sure what to do next, that's what's gonna get you through. So typically, it has a social impact. A lot of the ideas come through to making a difference on campus and in our community. So if you look at the different awards, you see the campus-wide difference maker. These are the awards that you can apply for. S significant social impact, contribution to healthier low lifestyle, innovative technology solutions, first to market, honorable mention. Not to be my favorite, no pun intended, fan favorite's my personal favorite. There's always that one idea that might not get picked by the judges, but you're like, they deserve money. So that's why I'm a big fan of that. My favorite thing, we talked about this earlier, why I love Difference Maker, it brings together the whole school. As you'll see tonight, we got engineering students, we got business students, computer science. That's why I'm a big fan of this. Anything that brings the whole school together is a good thing in my eyes. So, now it's your turn. Okay, I'm uh, Tom Wilkes, um, faculty fellow for the College of Sciences. And, uh, I think uh, Kevin mentioned like engineering, management, um, computer science, all of those places, but let's not neglect uh, the South Campus as well. Um, a lot of teams come from um, college uh, or a school of health sciences, uh, from arts and so forth. And all of these projects have uh, very big impacts. And uh, I like to see especially multidisciplinary teams that bring together um, people from different departments and different colleges on campus. <clears throat> now I'm gonna talk about uh, three different projects uh, that, that uh, were participants in uh, past uh, Difference Maker contests. And uh, we only have uh, time for uh, two of the pitch videos that they made, um, so I won't have a video for this first one. Um, however, uh, we'll um, uh, do videos for the second two and you'll get a chance to see how those particular teams actually pitch uh, their problem. Um, we will only go through the problem portion because that's what we're talking about tonight, uh, but um, the uh, other aspects like um, the uh, market and the solution and the uh, uh, business plan and so forth, those come in future workshops. Okay, uh, so the first uh, project we're gonna talk about is the bio bubbler. And uh, you saw actually um, the title of that on uh, the previous slide that Kevin was just talking to. And the problem that they were trying to address was uh, the fact that only about 45% uh, of the population in Haiti had access to clean drinking water. And um, so uh, that uh, caused a lot of fatalities and uh, illness in Haiti. Uh, so uh, that was the problem they were addressing. Um, we do not talk about the solution here, uh, just the problem. Um, so basically the team then brainstorms to come up with the solution to that, but the first step is clearly defining the problem. Uh, and uh, in engineering and um, computer science, you know it's well known that uh, you have to first have a requirements 
document uh, or else you're sunk because uh, two things can go wrong. Things can get added to it, what's called mission creep, uh, which will destroy your project. Uh, or you can find that you bit off more than you can chew. And uh, then uh, the opposite of that, uh, which is scope reduction, must occur. Okay, but uh, either one can be um, a little bit difficult for uh, the project team members. So uh, that's why the problem statement is going to be very uh, vital to um, setting up your project to begin with. Okay, uh, so uh, basically what's underlined here are the key points of this problem statement. So let's go uh, to the next one, which is called uh, QBell. QBell uh, was uh, basically a problem that was inspired by um, the various students' experiences in hospitals and what they observed in the hospitals. So I'm gonna uh, play the video uh, and let them explain it for themselves. We will be presenting on our product, QBell. I'm Stephanie Wilson, a nursing student. I'm Teresa Fullerton, also a nursing student. And we have Nick Yo and Adriana Kellos, two other nursing students. And my name is Jeremy Arzuega. I'm a computer science student. We also have Vivian Chow and Gao Gao, who also has a business and marketing degree. So by a show of hands, how many of you have ever been to a hospital and felt overwhelmed by the number of lights going off? A few of you? Okay. So nurses work in this environment on a daily basis, which puts them at an increased risk for developing alarm fatigue. Alarm fatigue is when someone becomes desensitized to frequent alarms. And we found that nurses who experience this are three times more likely to commit an error. So this could be a medication error. It could be the wrong med, the wrong dose, the wrong group, and any of these could potentially be fatal to a patient. Alarm fatigue also decreases reaction time, which in turn affects patient satisfaction. And all this compromises patient safety, which could also harm the nurse and the facility. So all the nursing students work in hospitals in the area. We conducted our own survey. We asked 68 nurses and aides to take our questionnaire, and we found that the majority of the participants felt that they do experience alarm fatigue. They have problems prioritizing care. They are often overwhelmed and distracted by the colleagues. Right now, the current call bell system in place is flawed. So this picture on the bottom left is the team <coughs> wrote, and the red button at the top is how patients call for help. So we believe that this is not user-friendly for all of our patients. It does not help nurses or aides prioritize care. It doesn't tell them what the patient wants, and frankly, it's out of date to find. So uh, that was the problem statement. Now it's segueing into uh, the solution part. But because um, the audio wasn't so good and uh, the closed captions were nonsense, um, let me just explain what was uh, being said there. Um, and um, one aspect is it's the health science people who are introducing the problem and the uh, College of Science major who's explaining the solution on this team. Uh, but the Basic problem was that um, when uh, some of these students had hospital stays, they noticed the overwhelming number of alarms that the nurses were having to respond to. And the response time of uh, the nurses was uh, badly um, affected by that um, amount of um, basically noise that they were getting. Um, so um, basically a, a patient like in the intensive care is hooked up to a number of monitors. All those monitors are constantly beeping and uh, setting off alarms uh, for um, silly things. Um, and the nurses are overwhelmed uh, when they're uh, trying to respond to these things. So um, I'll only say a little bit about the solution. Their solution was um, an app on a phone or an iPad that was connected uh, basically to the alarm systems and the nurses could set filters on those alarms to uh, basically only present them with the important ones and not the unimportant ones. And it basically reduced the noise uh, that they were experiencing. Okay, um, so that was the uh, QBell project. Uh, let's go next to the CatMatch project. Um, so if I go to PowerPoint. Um, the CatMat project uh, basically has to do with um, uh, types of um, uh, <coughs> therapy uh, for uh, patients who have experienced ambulatory problems. So let me let them explain that. Okay. All right. Hi, 
Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Mailu. And I'm Katie Muse. We're both physical therapy graduate students, and today we're here to talk to you about the Community Ambulation Tool Map, also known as the CAT Map. So physical therapists are movement experts, and abnormality of gait, or a person's manner of walking, is one of the primary impairments that we treat. Currently, there is no lightweight, cost-effective, easy-to-use device that therapists can use to train patients to successfully ambulate in the community or walk outside. We have been studying in this field for six years and have experienced this problem firsthand. We know there is a need for a better gait training device. We surveyed UMass Soul PTs and PTs practicing in the surrounding area. 100% responded that patients would benefit from gait training on uneven terrain. However, 77% said they found it challenging to simulate this terrain and 74% said so that was due, in part, to a lack of functionally accurate simulation devices. The AirX Balance Pad is the most comparable product on the market. It is a foam balance pad that cannot simulate an outdoor environment and patients cannot walk on, and is therefore not a solution to this problem. We also research common diagnoses associated with gait impairments, and the incidence number per year was staggering, with traumatic brain injury ranking in over 250,000 per year and ankle sprains well over a million. DTs are treating these patients every single day. And with insurance constantly tightening the purse strings, we want to get patients better, quicker, faster. Talk about their solution. Uh, but um, they presented the problem. Uh, let's go back to PowerPoint. OK. Um, so. So they're a problem, just to summarize again, because uh, uh, closed captions are nonsense uh, that are automatically generated. Uh, the basic problem is uh, there was currently no um, cheap and effective solution for retraining uh, people to walk, uh, basically, uh, who have experienced injuries, including brain injuries. And um, they can't take them outside because um, uh, they can experience new injuries uh, due to weather or uneven services, uh, particularly. Um, and um, so they needed something different that could be used inside and was easily um, transported to uh, where the patients were and so forth. And just to say um, a little bit about the solution, their solution is this series of interlocking mats that form a big grid that uh, then can provide a stable environment for the uh, patients to ambulate on, basically. So CAT stands for Community Ambulatory Training, uh, rather than uh, being a mat that cats use, <laughs> for example. OK. Um, so those are uh, two teams that uh, pre uh, presented their problems very well. Uh, you notice the CAT mat um, team especially uh, presented a lot of statistics uh, to back up uh, that problem. Okay, uh, any questions about the uh, problem statements that have been shown so far? Okay, so I think, uh, Kevin, you're up next. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you can see, this is our next part of the program. Gonna take one minute to introduce yourself, name, major, year, and school. State the problem you want to solve. Most of you are here tonight because you already have a problem you want to work on. Do you need additional teammates to solve your problem? This is your chance to tell us what you need so we can help you find it. Do you need additional teammates? If so, what do you need? Persuade potential team members to choose you. Oh, it's not on yet. We're going to start right here in the front. There you go, my friend. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Just follow along an example. Okay. Um, is that, there we go. Uh, my name is uh, Jules, my major, I am a physics major and I am a freshman. Uh, the problem that I am working on solving, it is a multi-problem of one, STEM literacy um, and the, of like, and like making things and then also teaching more about different inventors and inventions and like science concepts, um, sp specifically with inventors and showing diversity in the inventors because a lot of people don't know uh, all the diversity that there is because we don't get taught it in school. 
Uh, I'm not currently looking for any additional teammates. I do have another teammate. He's not here tonight. Um, he's also a freshman and a computer science major. <laughs> now you took a drink. Yeah, yeah. I had to, had to clear my throat. <clears> throat> uh, hello, everyone. My name is Isaac Carpio, and uh, my major is finance, and I am a junior. So me and my partner's problem is to find a way that crypto investors can take their gains and um, immediately transfer their gains into the stock market to buy stocks. Um, we w are looking for additional teammates, ideally um, maybe some marketing experience and some technical or computer science experience. Um, if so, do we need... Yeah, so we would need marketing expertise and computer science expertise. Yeah, thank you. My name is Jeremy. I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. I am one of two members, um, the other who could not make it tonight, um, who is working on a product that will, a sensor actually that will detect the level of impact or force that players in contact sports receive to help um, minimize and reduce the number of concussions and CTE that plagues 99% of NFL players, for example, um, nowadays. Um, we actually are currently looking for um, maybe a business major to help us with uh, um, formulating our business model and um, some other financials. Um, Thank you. Uh, my name is Anthony. I'm a computer science. Uh, I'm in my junior year. Uh, and I'm searching to solve the problem on the lack of information and transparency on fair rent in specifically the Lowell area, but then eventually the whole country. Um, I want to create a platform that's community driven and where I crowdsource all of the rent data for everyone available to see. Uh, and then removing that veil of, of rent data and showing transparency in the area uh, to stabilize rent markets. Thank you. Um, my name is John. I'm an engineering physics major, and I'm a junior. Uh, the problem that my team is working to solve is uh, the idea of sustainability in 3D printing. Uh, what we want to do is make a more sustainable solution by having some sort of machine that lets you recycle your plastics for filament that you could use again. Uh, currently, we, have, we had a team of four last semester, but two of them are on co-op this semester. So I guess we'd be looking for a plastics engineer. The other person on our team is an environmental engineer, and she's right here. Hi. I'm on the other person. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, I'm Leticia, other person, environmental engineering, and I'm a junior. Thank you. Yep. Hi, uh, my name's Quinn. Um, our team is making a drone that will charge its batteries during the day using solar panels and fly during the night. And if it can do this once, and it can do it over and over again, theoretically, getting an infinite flight time, though this is limited by the weather, still it would get incredible endurance for very cheaply, and this could be very useful for various government agencies, such as the National Coast Guard or Customs and Border Patrol, that have to survey large areas of land regularly for as low of a price as physically possible. My name is Jason. I'm majoring in accounting and finance. This is my freshman year right now. Uh, the problem that my team that my team is trying to solve is like the marketing part. It's like doing research about the drone and like what ways can I can we try to help and like try to improve. Hi, my name is Kevin. Uh, my major is business finance, and I recently just joined the team, so I I don't know that much about it yet. But. That's great. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Connor Ludford. I'm a sophomore here, and I study accounting. Um, the problem I hope to solve with this program is actually to improve on just the application process for different jobs or um, whatever you're trying to apply for. Uh, so I want to simplify that and um, help organize all the important documents as well as um, possibly add a feature where you could scan a job description for important keywords to optimize your um, application and tailor it to the employer. Do you need any teammates? Um, 
I am looking for teammates. Um, I'm an accounting major, so I would really use some help in the computer science um, department if, if anyone. That's not great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Omar Asri. I'm a business administration major with finance and operations analytics. Um, the issue we're trying to solve is um, solve multiple world issues while also creating a, a more functional <coughs> phone case. Um, the problem is the world is polluted with plastic and we want to direct it into something useful and help other causes around the world with our funds as well. And currently we are looking for a plastic engineer to help develop the um, phone case and other add-ons as well. Um, this is my partner Nikita and we also have a third uh, person, he's also a business major, um, but he'll be here later on tonight. Uh, yeah, my name is Nikita, a uh, computer science major, and I'm a junior, working with this guy. My name is Karan. Uh, I'm a plastics engineering uh, student, a grad student. And the problem we are trying to solve is, uh, like a lot of people talking on plastic sustainability, so uh, foam 3D printed cases, and uh, which will use the recyclable as well as biodegradable polymers. And uh, it's 3D printed phones, so which can be used for any electronic devices, uh, which are used in the harsh environmental conditions or any day-to-day uh, -day life uh, devices used in the day-to-day -day life. So yeah, that's our objective. And yeah, we're looking for marketing people as well. And uh, there are three other teammates who are also from uh, plastics department. And yeah, we are open to collaborate with others. Hi, my name is Hod. Uh, I'm actually a biology major. And uh, so the problem I'm looking to solve is uh, it's regarding the Azan. So as for some background information, um, for the Muslim community, uh, they pray five times a day. And before each prayer, they have this thing called the Azan, which is the call to prayer. And like if you go to the Muslim communities, they have like a speaker outdoors that would pray that call to prayer. So I'm trying to find a solution where you can, like around here, you can have the Azan play for you at home. Uh, and like some, some sort of technology for that. And as for teammates right now, uh, I'm not looking for any teammates um, yet. Uh, I'm Jonathan. Uh, I'm a finance and analytics and operation management major. Uh, the problem we're gonna try to solve. Oh, then, yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Diego. First of all, let me say happy engineers week to any my fellow engineers in the room. Um, so my major here at uh, UMass is in my, doing my MBA here, uh, focusing on innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, the problem that I'm working on is very personal to me. Uh, um, to create a mechanical device to make homes safer, special, specifically in the Caribbean, um, it, is also applicable here in the US uh, that I'm learning recently. Um, to create that solution to remove a fire hazard from the homes. Um, um, I do need teammates, or I'm searching to be, trying to build a team. Uh, I would recruit a mechanic, a mechanical, another mechanical engineer who uh, enjoys doing designing as well as cares to, you know, help others. Um, I believe that's all that's required. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Vijay, and uh, I'm working in Office of Technology Commercialization as a licensing manager. So mostly we work with faculty community, but we are here to help a student also in any way as much as we can in terms of uh, when you have any idea how to protect the idea to start with, how to communicate with the companies and all, and uh, uh, what are the next steps and how you can do them successfully. So you can reach out to us uh, if you need any help. I'm Khaled Abul Hassan, and I'm in the OTC and New Ventures, and it's the same as VJ said, we're here to help you. Hi, I'm Dawson, I'm mechanical engineering in sophomore year. What I'm working on is a website and app for election information, 
uh, as some I know, the um, George Santos with his uh, platform of not telling truths about anything. I feel like that sort of thing probably could have gotten out there beforehand. People know what their elected officials are and what bills they vote for. Uh, I have two other people on my team that are electrical engineers, so I'd be looking for computer science, business, marketing, graphics design, or if you're interested in the project, uh, always welcome. Hello everyone, um, my name is Sohail, and I am a senior computer science major, and I don't have an idea, so I guess I'm looking for a team. So in the next part, we're going to use the, the toolkit problem and market opportunity worksheets. Right, you got to write your problem on a piece of paper. Are those out on the table? Yeah. Okay. So just take the next two minutes to work on that for me, okay? All right, hang on, we'll get you the worksheets. We'll go from there. Okay, you all ready? We're gonna get started again. So at this point in time, we're gonna ask you who's interested in your idea to see if maybe someone in the room has a similar idea that maybe it could work together with, okay? We're gonna start in the front. Ready, Jules? Yes, okay. So it's just saying who's interested. Yeah, so who do you think would be interested in your idea? Okay, um, really, there are people who would be interested. It'd be almost like anyone who's interested in learning about STEM or inventing or anything like that. Um, so specifically with the solution that I have for it, it's marketed more towards teenagers and younger kids. However, adults can also use it. But that also means that for people who would be interested would be schools or, but mostly it'd probably be parents buying it for their kids. Um, so that would be a thing with the marketing of looking at that and trying to um, make it interesting enough for kids to want to get it, but also have like the informational and educational part so that the parents want to get it for their kids. Does anyone in the room have a similar idea? I didn't hear that earlier, so I'm assuming not. Okay, one to you guys. Your turn now. Sure. What was the question? So, who would you think is interested in your idea? Um, people that would be interested in our idea would be um, people who are both involved in the crypto world and the stock world. Also, like day traders who, um, you know, go back and forth between both um, assets. Um, it could be people who are long-term investors who just want to put their money in, in the stock or in the crypto and wait a few, a few months or years and then convert it into the stock market for safer stability and um, not having to worry too much about the um, volatility of um, crypto market. So if the stock is, is extremely volatile, you could probably switch to the crypto. If the crypto is volatile, then you could just go back and forth between um, both asset classes. Uh, so to remind you guys, um, I'm working in the concussion detector. I think anyone who plays or is involved in a contact sport should be interested in this um, since they obviously want to preserve um, their mental health. And going beyond that, anyone who has a loved one who plays uh, contact sports, um, who cares about uh, their individual's mental health and mental well-being um, now or well into the future. So to solve the lack of transparency around rents across the country, I think the people that would benefit from a platform that had you know, available rent data across the whole country would be from all sides of it. It would be renters, landlords, and realtors. Realtors would benefit because both sides, tenant and uh, landlord, would be able to make a deal quicker with more transparency. Um, and landlords would be able to price their uh, their units more accurately, given more information, and tenants will be able to see that the rent that they're paying is fair in an area. All right, to reiterate, our, our product is a machine that lets you recycle household plastics into 3D printer filaments, and the first people that would probably benefit from this is people who have 3D printers at home and plastic, which is most people. 
Uh, they can just get free 3D printer filament from it. But we want to extend our idea, and our machine can also go to universities and towns, and they can produce filament with the recycle that they buy, and then they can sell the filament as some sort of supplementary cost. Our main problem is like solving like how does a drone like going from day to night and from night to day, and like the main group that we're focusing on is like the coast guards because they need to cover like the whole ocean and like they're not gonna have enough manpower enough to do that. So we're try we're trying to solve like the technology side and like all other sides like from like. How does the drone get battery like overnight? And like how, how does it store power? And like, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, I'll keep going. Uh, so just to reiterate for uh, my project, I aim to provide a um, product that helps organize your important um, application documents like your resumes and cover letters and optimize them for a specific job description. Uh, and so I think the people who would benefit the most from this are um, people who are actively applying for a position, um, whether it's something that's coming up in the next couple months um, or um, in the near term, um, just keeping organized and on top of that. Uh, <clears throat> so the problem which we are trying to focus on is that one is sustainability, which most of the people are, are talking about that. So reuse the plastics. Second is reuse uh, biodegradable plastics as well. And uh, we, we are focusing on the uh, foamed uh, parts, like 3D printed parts, and which are foamed. So such case, like, and focusing on the uh, cases for the electronic devices. So with the traditional manufacturing of those cases, th those cases are very expensive. And the investment cost on that is very expensive. So 3D printed, it's, it's cheap. The, the product cost will be cheap. And uh, also, it will provide us a customized design. And anyone can use that at home. As, as uh, uh, Mate said that about the filament fabrication, uh, we have made the filaments, and we have al already made the prototypes of that. And we have already made the prototypes of the cases as well. And uh, yeah, and we, we need the marketing people for the help on that. Uh, so our problem um, is to eliminate uh, plastic waste in the oceans. So we want to create um, uh, phone cases that are made from this polluted plastic. Um, and so honestly, our target group is just anyone who would have a phone. Um, and then extend that out to people who uh, just want to uh, be in a bigger part <laughs> in trying to help the world. Um, yeah, that's pretty much our goal. All right, so the problem that we had was uh, regarding the call to prayer. Um, and uh, will we, uh, well, there's over a billion Muslims in the world, but we're primarily focusing on the ones in the first world countries that have access to a phone, which, which we'll create an app for, and that have like a Google Home speaker or Alexa that can have the call to prayer on, uh, they, can, they can have the call to prayer on, and yeah, that's pretty much. All right, so just to reiterate, um, the, pro the idea that I'm working on is the mechanical uh, lock-in mechanism to remove the fire hazards from homes in the third world countries, or I should say um, Caribbean countries to be specific. Um, who, so the question, who's interested in those other ideas? Um, firstly, homeowners, the fire departments, um, anyone who wants to have a safer home without compromising their personal safety. Um, and I also understand that the question was asking who in the room would be interested in joining. Um, anyone who is interested in uh, helping people around the world be safer. So, uh, for example, the something similar or, or folks with similar um, 
passions like the previous, the first group that was shown with, that's working in, that worked in Haiti to develop, uh, develop solutions. So anyone who is interested in that type of work can be of you know, value because we're not limited to what we currently know. We can also learn new skills to put to a project to bring it forward. So though I did say mechanical, anyone mechanical could join the team, uh, it's not necessarily limited to that. So um, it all depends. So to reiterate, my team is for the voting misinformation. And so the first group, of course, being uh, misinformed voters and potential voters, where something comes up that um, they're negatively affected by a choice they made in the election. So being able to say like, oh, well, you know, maybe this does affect me. And, you know, maybe I should say something about it. So. With that, with campaigns, being able to put out uh, verified information, being able to show, you know, this is what we're looking to do, this is our record when it comes to passing legislation, and being able to save up on not having a campaign fund that's, uh, you know, just dissing on the other candidate and actually tell you what they want, they want to do. And then uh, the other group would be people wanting um, news that's not biased or sensationalized for elections and, you know, the crazy Uncle Dan who puts out the same Facebook post about how they actually want to make uh, child sacrifices, so. So here we're going to refine your problem as a team. Which problem are you most interested in? Most of you already have a team, so so now you're just going to work on that problem together by sharing ideas and getting feedback from each other, and just kind of work with your team at this point in time for the next ten minutes. That's the way to be efficient. All right, everyone, we're ready to get going back. So as you can see by the slide up, tell us more about your problem. All right, everyone, you ready? One minute pitch, introduce yourself, tell us about the problem you're working to solve, so share your toolkit. Then the big question is, what do you know or assume about the problem so far? And do you need any additional help, skills, or team members? If so, tell us what you need. Start us off, Con. All right, so I'm here to tell you about a product called AppTrack. Uh, AppTrack is a software that helps you organize all of your important documents and uh, optimize your application so that you have the best chances of getting hired. And we would do that in three different ways. First of all, we would help you um, organize which applications you've submitted so far and um, keep track of the, the progress on that. Um, their current status, so you know if you need to respond to anything uh, and what you need to say on top of. And then we would also have a service where you could enter in a job description and search for keywords um, or repeated phrases, um, basically anything that would stand out as something of importance. We're just keeping it the problem tonight, not the solution yet. Okay. We don't have to next week. <laughs> So uh, the problem would be just uh, helping uh, organize your um, application, and thank you. Thank you, Tom. Hi, yeah, my friend. Oh, yeah, we're just keeping it to problem tonight, so just follow along on the slide, okay? Hi, my name is Karun. Uh, so the, the problem we are working on is uh, looking into the uh, market of it. Uh, we want to, basically we want to 3D print the forms and use it for uh, electronic devices uh, in the harsh environment conditions. Uh, the, the focus is on that we will provide low cost 3D printed phones which will be customized according to the uh, requirement and uh, uh, also use the sustainable, uh, re recyclable and biodegradable polymers for it which enhances the sustainability. 
Now the, the question is like which person would want to think on that sustainability? It's, it's, uh, so we're looking at the low cost of it. So whatever we will provide, that will be low cost compared to the commercially available uh, f uh, cases for the electronic devices. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Yeah. Don't forget, just talk into the mic and remember, keep it to just the problem tonight, okay? Uh, I'm Jonathan. Uh, a problem we're trying to solve is to get uh, reduce the plastic waste in the environment. Uh, we know that plastic waste is a very big detriment to everyone and animals as well. And uh, yeah. So what's the assumption you made so far? Uh, the assumption is that they something has to be done in order to reduce the plastic waste and the impact it has on our environment. Do you need any other help? Yes. Uh, no, I think we're good. I think we're combining with another team. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, our, our problem is solving uh, the problem to have the call to, pr call to prayer uh, played at your home. Um, so basically in like Muslim countries, they have the call to prayer pl played on the speaker outside. So if you're home, you can already hear it. You know it's time to pray. And here in like the first world countries, you want to have a way to know like, oh, it's time to pray. So I should go, and then uh, what we want to solve is create like an app or sort of thing that would get you to hear it and know that, oh, maintain your prayer schedule. Have you made any assumptions so far about Like any solutions? No, any assumptions. Is that maybe, you know, um, this, will people want it on the whole map? Uh, I mean, I get, I get. Uh, yeah, that's the assumption we're making because, uh, as, as we know, there's no other app right now like that that would play it on a speaker for you at home. So, as of now, no. Okay, so about the problem that I'm working to solve. Um, in short, uh, homes that are constructed with uh, window bars that are permanently attached. Um, is, is done to keep the occupants safe from intruders. However, in doing so, they create a fire hazard for themselves. Um, people, meaning home, home owners who have such in their homes in areas such as you know Jamaica and other Caribbean countries, um, will be more than excited to have a solution that can integrate what they currently have and um, without compromising the purpose of having it in the first place. Just removing that fire hazard component so their family members, relatives won't perish because of fire. That has happened over and over and it's a real problem that I think I need to solve. Um, as for team members, I once again, I'm, you know, I'd be happy to have a team member to help with um, working on a prototype. I do have preliminary designs, um, but I do need, I, I, I would, the project would go far, farther, faster with another team member. Um, so the problem we're trying to solve is that the National Coast Guard currently spends about $2 billion a year trying to stop one of their most pronounced missions, which is drug trafficking through the American Maritime. However, um, they're pretty bad at it. Um, actually, it's been calculated that 90% of the drugs that travel through this land, they make it through scot-free. Only 10% are actually captured, and that's on a good year. Uh, it varies between 7 and 15% year on year. Um, the inherent issue behind this is linked, has been linked directly uh, to the inherent difficulty of trying to surveil vast areas of land cheaply, because you can't really pay a guy in a dinghy to cover 7 million square miles of ocean 24-7, it's just unreasonably expensive. So if we could build a drone that you know flies basically forever, it charges during the day, uh, uses its power, reserves at night, maybe it won't be able to actually fly forever. At some point there will be maintenance, at some point there will be untemperate weather, but if you can even cover it the majority of the time, you're, you're helping solve a massive problem that has billions of dollars thrown in, at it every single year, and all for a fraction of the price. And it's possible, it's possible with new hardware. Yes. I'm Dawson. So the problem is the 
addressing election misinformation. And so as compared to uh, 2022, the voting turnout was 62.8%, which was 158.4 million. And you can imagine the other percent being people that didn't vote. And so what our problem looks to do is have a resume essentially of the candidates, of the bills being proposed, what their past experience is, what they're planning to do. And so what we know about this problem is politicians will lie and bills will leave information up for interpretation. And so what we assume is that voters care because they showed up and non-voters don't know and don't care, which is why they didn't show up. Oh yeah, so for development, uh, developing the app, uh, so we could use a computer science member. Uh, for monetization, uh, we could use marketing and or business. And for graphic design, uh, we have an idea of what we want it to look like, but something that maybe doesn't look like it's drawn in paint.net would, um, would be appreciated. Uh, I'm Jules, so the problem I'm working to solve is STEM literacy and then diversity in STEM and specifically with inventors. Um, for what I know, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of places that try to fix STEM literacy. However, they do it in different ways, and then the only thing that's close to the idea is a, a company called Tinkercrate. Um, but the thing with that company, and this is where the inventing, the inventor diversity in inventors part comes in, is they don't talk about the inventors at all. Um, so one thing that I know about the problem with diversity inventors is that the only things that are addressing it are programs like Girls Who Code or Black Girls Coding, where they sometimes talk about some inventors who are dealt with code, but that's pretty much it. And on the only time inventors are talked about are in the very specific areas that they worked in and not in general. Um, and so assuming about the problem is that people care about this and that's a pretty easy assumption to make because there's a lot of evidence towards people caring about it because of how much money people do put into it and the programs and all that. Um, however, it's just this, this solution is different from what other people have done. Uh, not looking for any additional help skills or team members because I all have also studied business, law, marketing, arts, um, engineering, etc. Basically, yeah, I, I kind of have everything covered. <laughs> Hello, so I'm Isaac again, and the problem we are trying to solve is to allow crypto investors to take their gains from their asset class and directly buy stocks with it. Um, what we know for sure is that um, for that process to happen, it takes quite a long time, um, about a day or so, for them to sell off their assets and put it into the stock market. So um, that's what we know. What do we assume so far? Um, we don't have any assumptions so far. Um, but we do, like I said, we do need additional help, um, marketing and PR experience person, team member, and someone in computer science. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm Anthony, and my problem comes from a, a personal story from recently. And the question was, as I was touring apartments for the upcoming semester next year, is this a fair rent? And I found this question nearly impossible to answer given all the available data online and word of mouth wise. The only thing that I could do was look at active listings and ask my friends what they pay. And I got a wide range of answers from those two sources and a very different source of answers from the landlords and the property managers I was talking to. And there was a large disconnect that I was very, very frustrated with. And so this is a serious problem, not just for students who are often first time renters or new to an area and are uninformed and don't have these channels of social connections to find this answer, but across the whole country, whenever you move to a new place or look for a rent in an area, you don't know what your neighbors are paying, you don't know what the past tenant was paying, so this is a, a serious problem that needs to be solved. 
My name is Jeremy, and I'm working to solve the chronic issue regarding CTE, which is a progressive um, brain condition um, caused by repeated um, blows to the head region and a collection of concussion episodes. Uh, this is the same CTE that is found in 29% of high school football players, 87% of college players, and 99% of NFL players, and is linked to deteriorating mental health. Um, we are assuming that um, these players and loved ones care about their own mental health, as many of them will go on to raise families and work full-time jobs and need to provide for other people. Um, so we assume that they uh, care about their mental health and want to, uh, we want to work to uh, um, detect um, the other 50% of concussions that are currently going undetected. Um, uh, in football in specific. Um, so in terms of additional help, we could use um, another computer science um, individual to help aid in the digital interface of our project and also someone from the business department um, who wants to help us build our business model. Okay, let's uh, look at the next steps. Hang on one sec. So here's the next steps. You're gonna test your assumptions. Talk to at least 10 people who are affected by your defined problem. That's the key. Have they been affected by this? It's great to talk to your family and friends, but you wanna to talk to people who have this problem. They're the only ones that can tell you if it makes sense. You gotta to talk to your potential customers. Utilize library databases. You can reach out to the faculty fellows like myself, Tom, and, and Ray. You can talk to um, your peers. Obviously, you can talk to Dave and use the Difference Maker resource tab. Again, if you need additional teammates, you can visit the Team Maker team building platform. Out there, there's people who are looking to join teams. Please utilize the platform. You may find exactly what you're looking for. You can go out to the Team Maker list, view the list, log in with your credentials, and find additional teammates to build your team. So join the team, seeker, connect with them. You want me to just keep going or you want to take over? I'll just keep going. I'll do extra for you tonight. How's that? I mean, give, give the guy a mic. He doesn't want to give it back. So register for the workshop series. This is per the first part of the workshop series. So this is part of our $50,000 idea challenge. All the workshops are located right here. So they're from 5.30 to 7.30. Got guest speakers and dinners. So obviously we did one tonight. On February 27th is workshop two, assessing opportunities and value propositions. March 1st is workshop three, that's developing your business models and solutions. And on March 16th is delivering your rocket pitch. And this is just a recap of the important dates. So I think we got all those. The next one would be March 27th, we're gonna, um, the semifinalist teams, the guys idea plan will be due. And then on April 4th, I know Larry, we're gonna have the preliminary pitch off. And finally, April 13th is the big day where we'll announce the winners of our $50,000 idea challenge. And these are all the next steps. So we just already went over those. But if you wanna take a picture of these, that might help just to keep you on track. I'll give you a minute, make sure everyone's got it. Hi, Brendan wants it, has it. Good in the back, bud? Good, okay. And as you work on your idea plan, judges wanna see research and data. They don't want you to guess, they wanna see that you actually looked up the, the data to see how many people need it, what the need is. Judges wanna know you understand what it will take to solve the problem, implement your solution. As you go through the workshops and process, fill out your toolkit workshop, worksheets, hand out during the workouts and idea plan online. Again, if you need help, you can reach out to David. He can help you. So at the end, we just close up workshop evaluation. Take two or three minutes to complete the evaluation form being passed out. It's anonymous, you don't have to put your name on it. And it just helps us improve future workshops. And here's a way you can stay connected to Difference Maker. Follow us on all our channels. And I just want to take a moment to thank you for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. Okay.
I just want so to... I can, I, I can I have your attention one moment? So one use... Minute. One more minute, okay? Just, just real quick, there's a sheet you have about customer interview, how to, customer, how to interview customers. So use those worksheets to help you determine the questions you're going to ask. That will help you. The other thing I want you to think about is sort of how the problems became more refined as we kept iterating through the process. And, you know, and think about how you can keep doing that. Additionally, you heard that other teams need, need other students. So if you know of anyone who's interested in participating, maybe you can introduce them to the other teams or have them join the team maker platform. So Tom, did you? So we have one question that might be of interest to the rest of everyone. Go ahead, Jules. Fill out the idea plan. So the idea plan is opened online, and uh, it's, you should have access to that as part of your idea challenge application right now. Um, I, will send, I will be sending out some follow-up information uh, tomorrow. So if you have any questions with that, you can also email me around that. But uh, you'll get a copy of the toolkit, and we're going to hand out the evaluation forms now. Any other questions before we wrap up? All right, well, thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Appreciate it.